Okay, so remember in lesson 6.2, we were determining which quadrants everything was positive and when, where it was, what was positive and what was negative. And I gave you the mnemonic, all students take calculus. Okay, all students take calculus. Well, that was just a way of showing you that in quadrant one, all have a positive sign. In quadrant two, student starts with S, so only sign and its reciprocal are positive. Everything else is negative. In quadrant three, take starts with T, so tangent and its reciprocal are positive, everything else negative. And calculus starts with C. So in quadrant four, only cosine and its reciprocal are positive, everything else is negative. Well, there's another method for remembering this. It's just making this idea that sine and cosecant are reciprocals. So they're positive on top, negative on the bottom. Cosine and secant are reciprocals. They're positive on the right and negative on the left. So think about that. Sine was related to y over r and r over y. y is positive on top, negative on the bottom. Cosine was x over r and secant was r over x. x is positive on the right and negative on the left. Tangent, however, went positive, negative, positive, negative. That's because you'll notice these two are the same and that would make a positive answer. These two, one of each, make a negative answer because remember tangent is sine divided by cosine. This quadrant, they're both the same, making a positive answer. And in this quadrant, they're different, making a negative answer. So once again, this is just another way of remembering what quadrants are positive, what quadrants are negative, and what you can find there in those quadrants. So why do we need to know that? Why have I been focusing on that so much? Because sometimes they don't tell us exactly the angle we're looking for. All they're going to do is tell us where it's located. And they might even do that just by giving hints. When you look at this problem, it says sine is positive. Now think to yourself, where was sine positive? Going back, we know that sine was positive at the top in quadrants one and two. And then they tell me cosine is negative. Well, where is cosine negative? On the left in quadrants two and three. Well, where do both of those things happen at the same time? In quadrant two. So the quadrant in which the angle lies is in quadrant two. Let's do a couple more examples here. If sine is negative, that's going to be in quadrants three or four. If cosine is positive, that's going to be in quadrants one or four. Where do both of those happen at the same time? Where are they the same? Quadrant four. So this one is going to lie in quadrant four. One more, and then I'm going to let you do these other ones on your own for practice. If tangent is positive, it's in quadrant one or three. If cos, and this, you're just going to have to practice memorizing where these are. If cosine is positive, that's in quadrants one or four. What do they both have in common? Quadrant one. So this lies in quadrant one. You try these last two on your own and make sure that you can figure out which quadrant. Take a look at the notes online and you'll see the answers to these to check yourself. So moving on, let's remember that cosecant, we last time said cosecant is one over sine of theta. Remember when we were putting them in the calculator? And secant is one over cosine of theta. Cotangent is one over tangent of theta. That means if I wanted to find the cosecant value, I can simply flip the sine value over. I can find the reciprocal, turning what was ever on the bottom to the numerator and what was ever on the numerator to the denominator. Same for secant compared to cosine and cotangent compared to tangent. But there's one more. Tangent is also equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. And cotangent is, sine of, is cosine of theta, cosine of theta over sine of theta. 
So if I was given sine of theta and cosine of theta, first of all, notice please that sine here is positive. That's in quadrants one or two. And cosine is positive. That's in quadrants one and four. So my answer is going to be in quadrant one. So I know right now I could draw a triangle in quadrant one and I'm going to be finding theta in quadrant one. Now I could look at this and say this is y over r and x over r and fill it in. Or I could use this identity called the quotient identity and put the sine value, root 10 over 10, over the cosine value, 3 root 10 over 10. We multiply the top by 10 and the bottom by 10, and we're going to get root 10 over 3 root 10. The root 10s cancel, leaving me 1 on top, don't forget. That means my answer is 1 third. My tangent value is one-third. So tangent of theta is one-third. Well, we now have three of the trig values. Let's find the others. Well, cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent. So that's just three over one, which is three. And secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's going to be 10 over 3 root 10. Now we'll need to simplify that. That's going to end up being 10 root 10 over 30. 10 goes into itself once and 33 times. That's root 10 over 3. And then last but not least, cosecant of theta is equal to the sine value flipped over. Here's my sine value. That's going to be 10 over root 10. That simplifies out to 10 root 10 over 10, which we can cancel now, and the answer is just root 10. And it was in quadrant 1, so every answer is positive. Remember, in quadrant 1, every value, all students, all, so all are positive. Positive, 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 positive.